I want to read from Peter's first letter uh, to uh, a church that was experiencing great difficulty uh, in life. And I begin in chapter 1, verse 3. Peter writes, Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And it's kept in heaven for you and for me who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that's ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. During this Advent season, we're focusing on God's unbreakable gifts. And the challenge is is that we live in a very broken world. And we want to uh, look into our lives, the lives of those that uh, we share uh, life with, and uh, ask God to help us be ones that bring to them uh, the unbreakable gift of hope. We live in a broken world. Ezekiel was read for us earlier. And in that passage of Scripture, uh, the prophet is taken out by God and given a vision. And I can't think of a more hopeless situation than his vision and he looked out and he walked among a bunch of dry bones and the question was can these bones live again and the prophet's response and our response when we really are in that kind of a situation is God only knows and that's what we're here for on this particular day There are other situations in life that uh, challenge our hope. They uh, dent our hope. A Christian pastor, if you've been following uh, over the last couple years in Iran, has been imprisoned. Uh, There was some hope that when there were negotiations recently with the country of Iran that there might have been a negotiation that he could be returned to his family. We think of the recent typhoon damage in the Philippines, and we could add Oklahoma City, and we could add most recently the uh, damage that was done in Washington, Illinois. It has been a year not only of uh, damage in the United States, but around the globe. And if you see those pictures, there are people that as their homes are destroyed, as their loved ones are carried away, They're looking for a place that can be hopeful. In our lives, sometimes uh, it's a medical uh, determination, and we go through treatments, and uh, the treatments don't seem to address the medical issue. And we seek for a place where our hope will be unshaken. I thought we might just look at uh, the sources of hope that might be a part of our lives. Oftentimes, the first place we look for hope is in ourselves. And uh, we seek that the hope that is based on what's happened before, based on our faith, would be a hope that's sufficient. But many times we need others beyond ourselves. And 
So the next place of hope is our families. And having just gathered together for Thanksgiving, of course, holidays are times when families gather together. Uh, That is a source of great hope to us. Somehow when we're separated and spread apart, we're never as strong as when we're gathered together physically in the same place with one another. Uh, Beyond our families, when we are seeking a place where there might be hope for us, we go to churches and charities in our communities. And today there are uh, multitudes of folks that are looking to churches and charities in the community for, for food and for clothing and uh, for uh, money for Christmas gifts or the gifts of Christmas. And so we go to churches and charities. Another place we go is to the government. When all these other pieces uh, kind of have not been able to meet what our need is, sometimes maybe the government's first, maybe it's not down the list, but one of the places that we look for hope is that uh, the government that is our representation that takes the money that we pay in taxes to make a difference in people's lives in terms of bringing hope to them is there. Obviously, ultimately, the source of hope is God. And if we can make a connection that uh, uh, somehow, believe it or not, God can use the government to reach out to us. (laughs) Believe it or not, God can use churches and charities to reach out to us. Believe it or not, God can use families to reach out to us. The ultimate source of hope that is unbreakable is the hope that we find that comes from God. Reminds me of Jairus, if you remember that story in the book of Mark, and Jesus is in the midst of a crowd, and Jairus has come to share that his daughter's ill. And as Jesus continues to minister in the crowd, and there's a woman that's healed and ministered to, why the word comes to him that, don't bother the teacher anymore, your daughter has died and we hear the words don't be afraid just believe in the book of Romans Paul writes I pray that God the source of hope and that's what we're here for this unbreakable hope has its only source ultimately in God I pray that God the source of hope will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. And then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, this morning we might ask the question, how do we make contact with this unbreakable hope? How do we uh, keep the flow of this unbreakable hope in our lives, in Days where there's great joy, which is much easier for us, but also in those days when we think about the darkness and the challenges of a broken world. I want to just share this outline briefly about how we can claim that unbroken hope. First of all, we can claim the reality that each and every one of us has been created, and as the psalmist says, we were knit together in our mother's womb. We can know that God has an intimate knowledge. God knows us better than we even know ourselves. And that God has a tremendous investment in you and in me and in all of us, the ones that he has created. Secondly, God chose to enter our human experience. We come to this Christmas season, this Advent season, and it's a a season of, of marvel and wonder. I'm not sure if I had been in heaven with God that I would have said, yes, God, I'm willing to go. (laughs) I'm willing to go and be born in a stable. I'm willing to go and be born to very common parents, ones that have all the challenges and difficulties there are in life. But that was the announcement of the angel as he spoke to the shepherds, don't be afraid, I give you Good news of great joy that shall be for all people. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So if we're going to enter into this experience of having this unbreakable hope be a part of our life, that unbreakable hope is, is directly connected with this Christ event that we'll celebrate on Christmas Day. Thirdly, Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. Paul writes in second letter to the Corinthians, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the very righteousness of God. Our hope is found on the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us. And although we disappoint ourselves, although we sometimes do things that are hopeless, we claim the reality of that gift for us on the cross. And then then finally, as Peter said for us in his passage, God raised Jesus from the dead, and Peter put it like this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope. That unbreakable hope is a living hope because Christ lives today. There is no tomb that says this is where he lies, but Jesus Christ lives today. Finally, and very briefly, we're called to be agents of unbreakable hope. There's a school system in a large city that had a program to help children keep up with their homework while they were in one of the city hospitals. One day, a teacher assigned to that program came to the school and got her assignment. And the English teacher said, we're studying nouns and adverbs in class now, and I'd be grateful if you could help this boy understand so he doesn't fall behind. The hospital program teacher went to see the boy that afternoon. No one had mentioned to her that the boy had been badly burned and was in great pain. Upset at the sight of the boy, she stammered to him, I've been sent by your school to help you with nouns and adverbs. And then she left the room and felt totally inadequate. But the next day, a nurse asked her, what did you say to that boy? And the teacher felt she must have said something wrong and apologized. No, no, the nurse said, you don't know what I mean. You've We've been worried about that little boy, but ever since yesterday, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back, responding to treatment. It's as though he's decided to live. Two weeks later, the boy explained that he had completely given up hope until the teacher arrived. Everything changed, he said, when he came to the simple realization that they wouldn't send a teacher to work with nouns and adverbs with a dying boy, would they? Now, you and I are to be agents of this unbreakable hope, not only during the season of Advent, but every day of our lives. May God make us and allow us and give us the privilege of bringing unbreakable hope to others. Let's bow for a word of prayer.